okay then we will start now is it visible right here uh, can you tell me how we will we solve this question like the melting point of pure nickel when acted upon by a pressure of 10 to the power 8 pascal is what will be the melting point how will we solve Here pure nickel melts at 17, 26 Kelvin at 10 to the power 5 Pascal pressure and delta G value, delta V value solely to liquid transformation it is uh, 0 0.26 into 10 to the power 6 minus 6 meter cube per mole. There is change in value and the heat of fusion is given the melting point of nickel what will be the melting point of nickel when the pressure is 10 to the power 8 when this is 10 to the power 8 pascal then we have to calculate this melting point so how will we solve classic clepron equation yes so can you try what is the equation D ln P by dt equal to delta H by RT square and if you rearrange it you will get dt by dp equal to t vl minus vs delta hf so this value uh, is suppose delta v dt by dp equal to t delta v by delta h f so if you put here you will get this uh, temperature value. can you solve now delta p by delta t equal to delta s by delta v delta s you check it i don't have idea about this sequence Okay, you put here. You just integrate from e to uh, from this temperature to suppose this is t, and for pressure it is from ten to the power five to ten to the power eight. Here, if you integrate. Uh, you will get d l n p delta h by r t square d t plus c so we can write l n p l n p equal to minus delta h by r t plus c What value are you getting? Subramanian It is 1726 to T. Delta V value is given 0 0.0 per mole, 0 0.26 into 10 to the power minus 6 divided by delta HF value 1800. 
into pressure P. It varies from when uh, temperature is 17.26, it is 10 to the power 5. And when it is temperature T, then it is 10 to the power N. So can you calculate now? And here uh, 1 by P dP by dt delta H by R T square 1 by P dP. Are you calculating for this one? If you rearrange this one, you will get this equation. This one, okay, approximately seventeen twenty eight. Yes, yes. So, ln t minus ln seventeen twenty six equal to This will be zero point two six and ten to the power minus six by eighteen thirty, and we know ten to the power eight minus ten to the power five. So LNT minus this will be seven point four five three five. This much if you calculate, you will get T equal to. 1728.238 Kelvin It is asking the melting point of pure nickel when acted upon by a pressure of 10 to the power 8 Pascal. So this is our answer. Okay, come as it's okay. 1729. Eat okay. You try to rearrange this, you will get many uh, questions based on this one. This one, if you integrate it, you will find some different equation. Okay, you try this second question. Based on Clasius Clepron equation, you will find this uh, 10 years question. If you see, you will find 3 to 4 questions. So, you try to check or how will we solve for this one? Here, we have to calculate the number of atoms in the critical cluster. So, how many number of atoms are? And this is uh, FCC, like liquid solid transformation, which is FCC. Question. And atomic lattice parameter is given.
how will we solve you can tell me approach also here the uh, free energy change is given by this equation and gamma is the interfacial energy and delta gb less than 0 is the free energy change per interval for the liquid to solid transformation for liquid to solid transformation delta gb is negative this value is given gamma value is also given what will be the radius of cluster yes radius of cluster means uh, what will we do we will suppose it is r dash radius of cluster so for cluster delta g r star will be equal to 4 pi r star square gamma plus 4 by 3 pi r star cube delta g b if we want to find out r star maximum value so we have to differentiate it with respect to this r we will get 8 pi r star gamma plus 4 pi r star square delta g and we have to make it 0 for maximum value so 4 pi r if we take a common 2 gamma equal to minus r star delta g so r star will be equal to minus 2 gamma delta g so gamma value is given interfacial energy minus 2 into 3.3 .3 into 10 to the power minus 2 and delta gb value is given 3 into 10 to the power 7 so this will be 11 1.1 so 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 9 minus 2.2 nanometer so this is radius so it is 2.2 nanometer So, uh, can you calculate now? How will we calculate? Volume of the cluster we have to calculate, right? Suppose uh, this is cluster, volume of the cluster. In this cluster, there will be FCC crystal, many FCC crystal, small, small. And in one FCC crystal, it is FCC. There are four atoms. So, we have to calculate number of atoms in this cluster. Is it okay? I hope question is now clear. You first find out number of uh, this, how many cubic will be there in this and then you just multiply by 4 you will get this number of atoms because in FCC there are 4 number, number of atoms. we have to calculate volume right and it, it is uh, if we are taking it like uh, sphere then what will be the volume of the cluster 4 by 3 pi r cube 2.2 we already know this cube so we will get how much what is the volume of cluster it will be 44.60 nanometers cube Yes, yes, several minutes.
so suppose n number of this FCC crystals are there n number total n number so so can you tell me how will you now calculate volume of the FCC crystal what will be the volume of the FCC crystal हाँ प्रदीप अभी मैं कॉल करता हूँ हाँ अभी कॉल करता हूँ मेरे वन सेकंड वन सेकंड Yes, volume of the FCC will be this one. So, can you tell me total like uh, number of how many uh, FCC crystal will be? We are using suppose n. Approx 367. So, what you have done is n into suppose 1, 0.1212. Right, you have it will be equal to 44.60. So, n value you are getting 367 units, say, right? And 367 it is asking number of atoms, so it is FCC. So, num number of atoms will be 4 into 367. So, how much value will be? Fourteen seven, forty seven, fourteen seventy. Yes, it is okay for this question. If uh, BCC will be there, then you have to multiply by uh, two for BCC case. For simple cubic, it is for one. Is it okay? Okay, then we are moving to next question. Read this one. It still contains uh, this much mass percent of fluid required ferrite and 61.3 mass percent of oxygenite at heat required temperature carbon content of the steel in mass percent and total ferrite content i am expecting both of you to solve this question what will be the carbon content you know liver right So, it still contains mass prototype, right? And the working at you take to temperature. So, how will we solve? This will be nearly 0 0.8. This is 0 0.022. This is carbon weight percent, so mass percent. Four point two seven. 2.04 So it is saying 
61.3 mass percent austenite at eutectoid temperature and pro eutectoid ferrite. So, can you tell me where this pro eutectoid ferrite will form in this phase diagram? Left right, you can say from 0 0.8 to uh, from 0 0.8. It, will it be this side or this side? This is eutectoid point left. Okay, so suppose this is our here. Suppose this is x weight percent carbon at this point. At this point, what is this? Suppose at P point, it is given 38.7 um, mass percent pro eutectoid ferrite. So, 38.7 mass percent pro eutectoid ferrite plus 61.3 mass percent or still so it is asking to calculate carbon content so from this lever rule this is 0 0.022 this is 0 0.8 Suppose carbon content is x, so we can calculate this um, 0 0.8 minus x by total 0 0.8 minus 0 0.022 equal to it is given uh, 38.7 percent. So we can write 38.7 by 100. So from here we can calculate value of x. So, what will be the value of x? Carbon content of the steel. Zero point five. Okay. Zero point eight minus x equal to. Zero point three eight seven into. Okay, zero point. It will be zero point four nine eight nine, nearly zero point five. So now, what will be the total ferrite content at this room temperature? We have to. Focus. This is temperature. So what will be the total ferrite content? How will we calculate this arsenide? It will transform into perlite. Perlite is actually mixture of this ferrite and cement type so what will we do we, uh, we have this much ferrite percent and from this mass percent of arsenide we will calculate this ferrite so the total content of ferrite will be the total total ferrite content so how will we calculate for this take me right extreme edge yes this is given like 0 0.0022 and this is maximum point for cementite suppose it is 6.7 fp3 and this is ferrite this is you take to white point 0 0.8 so Fe3C formation we can calculate from here. What will be the means content? Can you calculate? It is 0 0.5, right? Total ferrite content 0 0.5.
so f 3 c will be this much 0 0.5 minus 0 0.022 divided by 6.7 minus 0 0.022 so can you tell what will be the f 3 c value I don't have calculator 0 0.07 0 so this is 0 uh, this is for cement tile so what will be the ferrite amount we just subtract 1 minus 0 0.07 and Ninety-three, approximately thirty ninety-two point eight. Yes, means if you add both, you will get uh, ninety-two point eight five nearly. You try to calculate. Yeah, you will get total ferrite fifty. 54 something nearly 54 54.15 uh, here we will get uh, 11 point something you try you try to solve it is it okay to you anyone You can directly calculate because uh, this uh, this will be nearly eight to one ratio. Ferrite content will be eight. This there is one mistake. See this uh, what this austenite will be. This austenite will convert into perlite. So we have to take zero point eight no one told me 0 0.8 because here already pro eutectoid ferrite has been formed now this we know at the eutectoid point which is 0 0.8 the austenite transforms into perlite so at this point the carbon level becomes 0 0.8 are you getting so you have to put 0 0.8 so if you put 0 0.8 you will get here yeah. uh, 0.1165 so cementite percentage will be 11.65 percent so this is cementite percent so already we know this uh, perlite will form 61.3 this is uh, 61.3 so in this 61.3 11.65 each percentage cement type so if you calculate you will get um, 7.14 this is cement type in this austenite or you can say perlite so total ferrite will be this ferrite already it is formed 38.7 plus this is 61.3 minus this one 7.14 so if you calculate you will get uh, nearly 92.885 is it okay if you have any issue you can ask come yes. here we will take 0 0.8 you remember this one Because it austenite, this austenite transform into transforms into perlite at this composition 0 0.8. That's why I am taking this 0 0.8. Is Should I move to next question? Please explain the last point. Which point? Okay. See, here you know gamma phase, right? And this is perlite. Perlite means fully perlite. 
this point if we go this way we will get per light plus austen uh, ferrite and if we go th this way we will get per light plus cement right so this per light is actually cementite plus ferrite and if we cool this is 0.5% carbon if we cool it first what will form first ferrite will form because here the maximum solute solubility of ferrite is 0 0.02 0 0.22 so ferrite will form and uh, austenite uh, suppose this is 0 0.5 carbon so ferrite uh, maximum solubility is 0 0.022 but perlite will form at 0 0.8 so here if you see at this point ferrite will form at this point if you take this one this much this point will shift to this one again if you, you will come to this one this will shift to this one means in austenite the carbon percent will increase because ferrite solute solubility is less than this one are you getting so if you will come to this one ferrite will be this much and in austenite carbon content will be here 0 0.8 and at this point only when carbon content goes to 0 0.8 then your full per light will form. That's why I have taken here 0. Point, uh, sorry, here 0. 0.8. Is it okay, Thomas? You check uh, what is the name of the book? Bhiragon. You try to check also. I have solved this question early. Can you try it again? It will take only four minutes, four to five maximum. Two mass question. Okay. I have solved this one. I have also told how to solve. Here we have to calculate yield. Yield of iron. So what will be the yield of iron percentage? This will be weight of iron in steel divided by weight of iron in hot metal in 200 and steel for steel uh, we can write weight of iron in hot metal minus weight of iron in slag from mass balance so can you now find out
one second. So here, this is given hot metal plus lime. In hot metal, we are adding lime in BUF, and after refining process, we, we are getting steel plus lime. And it is given five metric ton of lime. This lime is five metric ton. We can you can say a ton simply ten, ten one thousand kg. Okay, it's one yes, yes. So uh, five metric ton lime. That means ninety percent CO. So CO content will be ninety percent. Five into ninety by hundred. Four point five kg. Uh, metric ton CO. Even 100 metric ton of hot metal. So, which consists of iron? Iron content in hot metal is 93.2 by 100 into 100. So, we can write 93.2 metric ton iron. It is used for uh, to refine 100 metric ton of hot metal. So, and we do not know the slag, slag composition. So, so, for example, suppose slag composition is X. So, from the uh, mass balance, the, uh, we can calculate amount of CaO in line which we are adding will be equal to amount of CaO in slag because in this uh, uh, steel, CaO, there is no CaO. So, all addition will go into slag. So, it is given 4.5 we have calculated. It will be equal to 40% CO in slag. 40 by 100 into X. So, from here. Sir, is the answer 97.9? Yes, yes, it will be 97.9. So, from here you can calculate this slag. It will be 11.25 metric tons now. So we know this one. Uh, this from this slag, it is given 22.8 uh, percent FeO. So uh, FeO plus half or two equal to FeO. One mole FeO, one mole FeO. That means 72 gram. FU is associated with 56 gram FC. So, this much of slag. So, in this slag, how much of FU are present? 11.25 into 22 percent. So, how much this one will be? 2.475 metric ton FeO. This is in slag. So, this much metric ton of FeO, the amount of FeO, this is 72 gram FeO, it, in 72 gram FeO, 56 gram FeO. So, 2.475 metric ton FeO, FeO content will be 56 by 72 into 2.475. Four seven five. So you will get one point nine two five metric ton iron. This is in slag. So now simply you put this yield of iron. We know this one, this one, this one right here. Ninety-three point two minus 
1.925 divided by 93.2 this is percent yield of iron into 100 so you will get nearly 97.93 percent is it okay subramanya you can check for them okay then we are moving to next question so what will be the setting velocity of a 0.5 micron diameter uh, particle having density in water under laminar flow conditions is what will be the setting velocity We know uh, Stokes equation V equal to 2 by 9 and GS square rho L liquid. This is for solid particle. Need a viscosity. So if you put, we will get 12. Sir. Yes. Unit means uh, unit of what? It is given viscosity of water. Uh, what are you saying? It is sent. Uh, you, hmm, yes, yes, yes. It is centipoise. So one centipoise means uh, you can write ten to the power minus two poise. And this is like uh, gram per centimeter second so according to you convert it in SI unit SI means kg per uh, meter second now I think it is clear to you so 10 to the power minus 2 suppose this is gram into 10 to the power minus 3 minus 2 this is a sign. Is it okay, Sanjeev? This one. So 10 to the power minus 3 it will be. R means it is given as diameter, right? So 0 0.25 to 10 to the power minus 6 square into 4900 minus 1000. Dear 10 to the power minus 3. So, what value you are getting? It will be nearly 5.313 Newton to the power minus 7 meter per second. Is it okay? Okay. Here activation energy for a reaction is given and the we have to represent the approximate increase in temperature required for doubling the rate of reaction from room temperature 25 degrees centigrade. So, what will be the approximate increase in temperature? Delta T value.
suppose for one reaction e1 is given for one reaction for second reaction and there is some temperature t1 right if t2 if we increase this to t2 it doubles this it to e to e1 it becomes 2e1 so we have to find out this change in temperature delta t t2 minus t for this condition and t1 is given 25 degree centigrade and uh, activation energy for this reaction is also given. Uh, yes so you have to subtract according to you will get delta t1 change in temperature you, you know rate of reaction equation e1 equal to suppose a for reaction 1 exponential minus q by rt1 and for it is 2e1 exponential minus q by rt2 and if you use this subtract from this 2 to 1 you will get 2 equal to exponential minus q by r 1 by t2 minus 1 by q so you take ln2 it will be minus this q value is given 100 to 10 to the power 3 r value we know 314 and 1 by t2 minus 1 by t1 298 here we have to make it in kelvin because we have uh, put this value in uh, jude per mole r value we know so this one so 5 point if you saw this one 5 point 7 6 2 8 into 10 to the power minus 5 in volume equal to 1 by 298 minus 1 by t2 so this t2 value will be equal to 300 3.2 so it is asking change in temperature but earlier it was 297 so 297 298 25 298 302 minus uh, 302.2 minus 298 so you will get 5.2 kelvin change in temperature is it okay okay Based on the same equation, you can solve this one also. Here, equilibrium vacancy concentration in copper is given at temperature 1000 degree centigrade and at 800 degree centigrade, this is 134 ppm. So, the molar enthalpy of vacancy formation. N not E minus h by r t you just what you do you just change it in kelvin kelvin and here it is asking uh, molar enthalpy for vacancy formation so you have to calculate this h value so from here you can find out h value this is equilibrium concentration You will find nearly 83.97 kJ per hour. Okay, then is it okay? 
There is one more question I want to solve. You solve this one. Enthalpy of formation at this temperature uh, delta H naught of CO2 and PBO are given. This one and this one. Right? More and usual per mole. And we have to calculate the enthalpy chain for this reaction. So what will be the enthalpy chain? Five sixty six. No. You try to write equation. Then you can solve. I also uh, miss in first instance if you uh, try to give answer it will be 565 means but if you write a equation properly then you will find where you are making mistakes no it will not be minus 173 okay let me add Sir, it be no no not 566 see here it is even uh, 2 pbo here you are making mistakes in per mole. See, it is given in per mole. You try again. This is given in per mole. 2 PV plus CO2. And it is given delta H naught for CO2 formation. This is minus 393 kilojoule per mole. And for PVO, minus 220 kilojoule. Yes, 47 will be the right answer. Subramani. So here C plus O2, CO2 formation is suppose this value is given minus 393. This is delta H0 CO2. And for PBO, 2 PB. Uh, no, not two PV. For PV formation, two PV if we write from this one, two PV plus O2. There will be some delta H naught. Delta H one naught. So if we add it, we get two PVO, two uh, CO two plus two PV. Delta H naught for this reaction. This is asking to calculate this delta H naught. Delta H naught is equal to delta H one first reaction plus delta H naught two. Delta H one, this CO two formation is given minus 393 plus and this delta H2 means this is PV for 2 more so we have to multiply 2 into and it is given minus 2 to 0 so it is for PBO formation so it will be the opposite of this because we have, I have written reaction opposite so plus 2 to 0 so if you solve it, you will get 47 kilo per mole. This will be per mole again. Is it okay? Here uh, given, it is given that uh, when one mole of copper is going from this temperature to this one, the amount of heat released, we have to calculate the amount of heat. And uh, the specific heat capacity of copper is given is a function of temperature. So, uh, how will we solve? What will be the value of amount of heat released?
yeah, it will simply integrate. We know this uh, dH equal to CPDT from temperature uh, 1000 to 300. It is already given in Kelvin. Suppose this is H1 to H2. So if you integrate delta H, that means H2 minus H1, if we are writing delta H. 1000 to 322.68 plus 6.3 to the power minus 3 d, d, d. So 2.68 300 minus 1000 plus 6.3 into 10 to the power minus 3 this is t square by 2 so if you saw you will get 1874 so which will be nearly 742 hmm, okay then you have if any question you can ask okay then I am closing this session Okay, sure. This is based on uh, Clapeyron uh, equation. This one, first one, classes Clapeyron. And second one is uh, we. Uh, Here we have to find number of atoms in cluster. You will find in 207 it was asked. And in third one, we have to calculate total ferrite. This is the important thing. Total ferrite count from liver. You take a screenshot, I think. Here it is um, important thing is total ferrite content. Like you know from austenite, uh, ferrite and cementite forms form right. So here total ferrite content you can calculate. And it is it was solved already. You were here you came. Here. 